Now I'd like to invite Executive Vice President of Busan Continental Terminal Yi Sang Shi, who will talk about acceleration of new strategy in major ports. Good afternoon. I'm Yi Sang Shik of Busan Container Terminal. My title is Acceleration of New Strategy in Major Ports. Basically, shipping industry is related to the port management, so my contents are first, business direction of global container carriers, secondly, container volume train in major ports and GTO strategy, and finally, current status of Busan port with development project. First, business direction of global container carriers. A case in point is the three major alliances. The global alliances are becoming more robust and solid, and the scope is expanding as well. As you all know, the two M's, which includes MERSC and MSC, which is a 10 years contract, and for Ocean Alliance, which is based on five plus five year contract, but the five-year option was implemented last year, so the term has been expanded to 10 years. And this includes Transatlantic and Middle East. Uh, the Ocean Alliance will expand the Middle East routes. And the Alliance, lastly, the HMM, by ordering 20 ships, the DL HMM joined the alliance after their joining. This is 10 years binding contract and the routes include Trans-Pacific, North Europe, Mediterranean and Transatlantic and even Middle East and India. The implication from this slide is that most alliances are based on 10-year contract but the renewal timing are all different. Once there are no major problems with the alliance, then the alliance will continue to exist. And in addition to strengthening their global alliances, they are ordering super large ships and recently they are accelerating the ordering pace. It will lead to the cascading effect for the existing routes. And it will have it create some difficulties for Korean sh shipping companies. In 1995, 1970, there were about 11 shipping companies in Korea, but M&A and bankruptcy has reduced the number to nine shipping companies. So the east-west routes in the past. The consignees affected the market, but the alliance adjusts the supply. A case in point, the North American route, the cost rose dramatically, but for other routes, the other routes are experiencing supply glut by the shipping alliances are controlling the supply. And finally, the Musk and CGM, they are expanding end-to-end -end service. Same CGM has acquired Saiba, but ultimately other global companies are joining their efforts. Next is new building order book by global carriers. As you can see in this slide, for ship ordering over 15,000 tons and PETA ships of 3,000 tons or lower are also rising. So the new order 10,000 TEU account for 96 percent and the Evergreen and CMA CGMs are very aggressive, followed by Yangming Line and HMI. 
The implication from this slide is the global alliances, which is becoming very solid. They are mobilizing super large ships for east and west route to secure the unit price competitiveness. So we need, they will implement hub and spoke strategy, and for other routes, they will employ feeder ships, so for, such as for Singapore and the transshipment of Busan will be very important. And also environmental regulations, shipping companies are fast responding to environmental regulations. After the first LNG, uh, and many shipping companies are introducing LNG power container vessels. In the, in the past, smaller shippers such as Europe and EU, they used fossil fuel. But for CMA ships, which was delivered last year, they are using LNG fuel, but about 20 ships will be delivered. So for Hapak Lloyd, they will retrofit existing ships to introduce LNG power and for new order, LNG ships will be added and LNG fuel will be the main fuel. And for balanced water treatment system, BWTS is a big issue. Since September 2019 to September 2024, all BWTS, all ships should be installed with BWTS and AMP, which is applied to Auckland, it in, it will be applied to global ports as well because it triggers pollution issues. And for port development, the 10 major ports around the world, the ranking 7 are all Chinese ports. But for Singapore or Busan, which are ranked 2nd or 6th, followed by Dubai and but. The, they depend on transshipment more than 50% of their volume. Now, the global GTO from this slide in 2019, their volume compared to 2018, it decreased by 9.4%. But for PSA or Hutchison or DP World, they saw the volume grow. Compared to other GTO, they, it's thanks to the different marketing strategy. The TPO world, the policy has changed. The, in addition to the container terminal sector, they are diversifying their business sectors. In Within the past three years, they acquired shipping industry and ship logistics industry and feeder company and also unit feeder to expand their terminal business. And for home port, which is their home, uh, Dubai, which is their home port, the rail, they are connecting rail, they implement the tri-port policy by containing rail, air, and land. And for PSA, basically it's global network of ports, which Global shipments are handled in Singapore more than 50%. And they're competing with Malaysia. And so PSA has signed strategic partnership with companies. And they set up joint venture. So in addition to CMA and CGM, they acquired Costco One and HMM this year to partner with those companies to prevent cargo leakage. From this point of view, the future development strategy for Busan port, the current status of Busan port, according to the SWAT, let's take a look at the SWAT analysis. The strengths are great geographical location and cost competitiveness, but for weakness, it's ITT terminal. It's a very serious weakness. 53% are ship transshipment in Busan. 
about 15% of the shipment goes ITT. If converted into price, it comes about 70 billion US dollars, 70 billion Korean won, and this will be borne by shipping industry, which will compromise the Busan port's competitiveness and also the uh, the differentiate of, of operation of Busan new port and North port. The COVID-19 and trade dispute, this is not an issue that's confined to Busan, but around the world. But in terms of opportunities, the Busan new port and small port and automated terminal and, B and the hinterland and other value-added projects, which that those are those will constitute the opportunities which will give Busan port a relative advantage over other ports. But automated terminal operation lags behind Busan's Rotterdam port in Shanghai, Chengdu, and ILW, and even Long Beach. Their terminal automation are very high, but Busan new port's automation is the 2-2 phase, which will open in May 2022. In addition to this, the existing port should be upgraded as well. And the infrastructure is very weak, in, uh, except for port function. A port should be equipped with the capability to generate some uh, side industry, such as uh, attracting large consigners from the U.S., such as we can, so Busan Port can open forward hub and a 23,000 ton use LNG, but Busan Port has no LNG bunker. This will, this is a very serious disadvantage for Busan. Now, the mid and long term strategy Busan port should seek one port strategy to become competitiveness again, competitive again. About 22 million TEU is handled in Busan, but the volume is less than 3 million tons. The consigners complain that the market size is small and they see no merit. So we have to seek one port strategy to improve Busan port's competitiveness to make Busan port uh, not just port but a major logistic hub and uh, this uh, separated operation of new port and Busan new port and North port the integration should accelerate further to become competitiveness. So the those ports function should be moved to the new port as early as possible. And finally, not just the government but the shipping industry should form Korean GTO. Not just Korea but many Korean forward companies are investing hugely in Southeast Asia to secure cargo. And so the government should nurture the GTO. Of course, many companies have conducted feasibility studies, but no specific action has been made. So, not, so by doing that, not just in Korea, the DPA and uh, PS and DP, DP world will be our competitive competitor, and we need to compete with them to secure our national competitiveness. Thank you.